Captain Carpenter by John Crow Ransom Captain Carpenter rose up in his prime, put on his pistols, and went riding out, but had got well nigh nowhere at that time till he fell in with ladies in a rout. It was a pretty lady in all her train that played with him so sweetly, but before an hour she'd taken a sword with all her mane and twined him of his nose for evermore. Captain Carpenter mounted up one day and rode straightwise into an even stranger rogue that looked unchristian, but be that as may, the captain did not wait for prologue, but drew upon him out of his great heart. The other swung against him with a club and cracked his two legs at the shinny part and let him roll and stick like any tub. Captain Carpenter rode many a time, from male and female took him sundry harms. He met the wife of Satan, crying, I'm the she-wolf bids you shall bear no more arms. There's strokes and counters whistled in the wind. I wish he had delivered half his blows. But where she should have made off like a hind, the bitch bit off his arms at the elbows. And Captain Carpenter parted with his ears to a black devil that used him in this wise. Oh, Jesus, there is three score and ten years another had plucked out his sweet blue eyes. Captain Carpenter got up in his roan and sallied from the gates in hell's despite. I heard him asking in the grimmest tones if any enemy yet there was to fight. To any adversary it is fame if he risked to be wounded by my tongue or burnt in two beneath my red heart's flame. Such are the perils he is cast among. But if he can, he has a pretty choice from an anatomy with little to lose. Whether he cut my tongue and take my voice or whether it be my round red heart he choose. It was the neatest knave that was ever seen, stepping in perfume from his lady's bower, who at this word put on his merry mien and fell on Captain Carpenter like a tower. I would not knock old fellows in the dust, but there lay Captain Carpenter on his back. His weapons were the old heart in his bust, and a blade shook between rotten teeth alack. The rogue, in scarred and gray, soon knew his mind. He wished to get his trophy and depart. With gentle apology and touch refined, he pierced him and produced the captain's heart. God's mercy rest on Captain Carpenter now. I thought him, sirs, an honest gentleman, citizen, husband, soldier, and scholar, and now let jangling kites eat up him as they can. But God's deep curses follow after those that charm him of his goodly nose and ears, his legs and strong arms of the two elbows, and eyes that had not watered seventy years. The curse of hell upon the sleek upstart that got the captain finally on his back and took the red, red vitals of his heart and made the kites to wet their beaks Clack, clack.